Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm starting my day with my girl Perdita here, of course, the cow reticulated python. Now, she's an amazing animal, but not everyone can keep reticulated pythons. Cause So could you imagine a reticulated python that was in a pint size? Like, let's say, a corn snake size. Well, guess what? I have to unbox a shipment right now that has that exact same thing. It has an animal as beautiful as Perdita, looks very similar, but is a corn snake. What do you say we just go ahead and unbox this? Well, Lori came at me with a, a kind of a surprise, had no idea she ordered a little box here, uh, and I was pretty shocked when she told me what was in it, and I said, you know what, let me unbox these because I'm sure you guys would like to see what's inside them as much as I will, and here we go. And by the way, I don't know even where she bought these, so I'm sorry, I would love to shout out the company that sent them to us. Thank you, whoever you are. I don't have any information, so I don't know what it is, but regardless, Lori just ordered these, and they showed up, and I love these guys. You guys know that I love the little cow reticulated pythons right well these aren't cow reticulated pythons but they sure look a lot like the cow reticulated pythons these are what they call palmetto corn snakes and ooh, doggy look at how gorgeous they are and unlike the cows they're born with the same amount of spots they're gonna keep their whole life so they look like miniature cows but again they're not born white and then get the spots they're actually born with the spots but of course as they get bigger the spots become a little bit more pronounced and stuff like that but absolutely incredible palmetto corns I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the other ones because again much like the cows each one is completely different right they're all going to have a little bit different colors a little bit of different patterns all that type of stuff which is pretty cool and uh, look at this one right here look at this it's got a really cool marking right on top of its head Woo that thing is gorgeous and again these will turn pure white just like Perdita, but again, just have different spots and they won't get more spots as they get older. And it looks like we actually got two pair of these guys. Again, uh, I didn't even know they were coming in, but I was super excited about it because I told Lori maybe like a month ago that I thought that we should add some because we only have one female palmetto corn right now. It's a yearling. As a matter of fact, I want to go and take a look at her in a second just to show you what these guys are going to look like in a year because I tell it they're absolutely stunning. So that's two of them. We'll take a look at the last one just to see what that one looks like. And then we'll go look at that year. Link. And take a look at this last one. Oh my goodness gracious. That's definitely my favorite of the bunch because it has really dark markings. These guys can sometimes have red, orange markings, yellow markings. This one looks like it's got the brown markings on it, which just makes it look really cool. Much more like a cow reticulated python. So I'm super excited that we got some more palmetto corn snakes. And I probably need to add some more to be totally honest with you because these things are unbelievably amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that older one just to show you what these things are going to look like here in a year. And this this is what those babies are gonna look like in a year from now. It is stunning, isn't it? I mean, literally, it is very similar to a cow retic. And like I've mentioned, this one has a lot of orange in it, just a little bit of grays in it, but that one looks like it's got a lot of kind of grays and browns in it, so it's gonna look more like a cow reticulated python. But the good news is, is that this is pretty much 90% grown. So palmetto corns have been around for, say, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years. They used to be like $2,500. Now they're actually relatively inexpensive expensive like maybe two three hundred bucks something like that but the fact is they're very hard to get you know because uh, people like me want to buy them all up if you know what I mean but they are amazing and that's why we want to raise up a nice group of these because I think when these guys are like 75 100 bucks man these are gonna be one of the most popular corn snakes in the world because they are absolutely stunning and again it's a recessive mutation so it's not a lelic like the cows I mean if you breed a palmetto corn to a palmetto corn you get a hundred percent palmetto corns it's just a single mutation which is just absolutely absolutely crazy to think that this animal literally came out of the wild like 10 years ago and is now being reproduced. Unbelievable. I couldn't be happier that we've got a couple more pair of these on the shelf now. Like I said, now I'm in the hunt for some more of them because they are so incredible. Let's go ahead and see if Jerry wants to eat right now. Again, usually Jerry starts to eat when Ben is almost done with the food. So we'll just go ahead and offer and see if there's any interest. Come on, Jerry, let's do it. Let's take it. Oh, it doesn't seem like there's any interest at all here. I'm gonna keep trying, but it just doesn't show any interest. But I tell you what, guys, this time I don't think Jerry's gonna eat. So let's just go ahead and offer Ben another meal. And again, because these guys really are sharing the same nutrition, Jerry doesn't have to eat. Ben can do all the eating, but I just like to see them both eat at the same time. So 
Lori called me and said that she actually bought these poles, these dolls, and she wanted me to do something with them. Uh, I don't know if she wants to make some like balance beams for some gymnastics in here. Not sure what we're doing with these, but I'm gonna go find Lori and find out what she needs me to do. So Lori, what is, what's up with these beams? Believe it or not, I wanted to do gymnastics. Really? Are you serious? I think that's a great idea. We could probably do it like over a gator pond or something. Exactly. No, that's not what I was thinking. What, what are you thinking about? <laughs> what are you seriously thinking about? I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I'm always trying to update and see what can work out good for the gift shop area. Okay. So I have an idea for one of my displays. What are you thinking? Well, I got this bottom part that really just doesn't get used because I got nothing that Okay, these fits. are our crazy snakes over here. Yeah, these this so is cool. more Look for that. smaller Ooh. things that I don't have. Okay. So, my thoughts are to cut these poles to where it'll go from here to the ground. Okay. To screw them in each side. And then we've got these little guys. And they'll go on the poles. Yes. And then... Th then the poles will go over to here. Yes, so then I can just... And this them. spins or no? This can't spin? No, it's not supposed to, so it, it won't spin. So they just have people walk it. around? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So how many of these do you want? You want all of them? Yes. Really? Yes, I bought enough to do 10. To do 10? There's 10 of them. Okay, and do you want them at this height or do you want them at a different height? No, I figured about that height. It might it might go a little bit lower because I think this is a little higher than 30 inches if you okay. just want to cut them to 30 to make it easy. So and then this down. can go down a little bit. Okay. But I figure it should be super easy if we just chop them, one screw in the top, one screw the bottom, right? Super easy. That's what she always says when she's telling me to do something. Okay, I'll get to just it. Just do it. Okay, I'll get to it. What do you think, Lori? It's done. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's perfect and it didn't even take you that long. <laughs> yep, it's, uh, yep. It's, or did uh, you allude that this took like four days? No, this was okay. this perfect. Let's try it. Put one on. I want to see how it looks. I want to see how it looks. I am excited. Let's see. It was really a good idea though, you know, because again, when they're up on the shelf, they're not as cool. And then now you can just put them like this. That's perfect. It is. I love it. Great right at kid level too. Yes, perfect. exactly. Yeah, that's a great, that was a great idea for you. I mean, that's, I think super that happy, awesome. love it, turned awesome. out great. Wait, <laughs> one more project done. We have a pretty good sized clutch here. This is actually nine eggs bred to a pinstripe that's het for azanthic, bred to a double het lavender snow. So we hopefully can hit some pinstripe azanthics that are het for lavender. That would be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Let's see what our odds are and uh, let's go into the first egg. All right, we hit the one earlier. We hit an azanthic from a similar breeding, but it wasn't a pin azanthic. And uh, oh, then right off the rip, we just hit a tip possible double head. So just a normal ball python, basically. That's not the way I want to start off. But hey, you guys know I want to end good, not start good. Let's just go ahead and go on to egg number two. All right. Even if I just get one azanthic, it starts to make me feel better. So what we have here is just a pinstripe. Possible head lavender snow. Uh, not getting very far on this one. Let's go to egg number three. We're just gonna bang through these till we get something awesome. And like I always mentioned, awesome is just hatching snakes, to be honest with you. So it doesn't really matter. And this is definitely, you can see right here, that's a pinstripe, but you can see that azanthic expression, right? It's kind of a visual hat. That's definitely azanthic possible hat lavender. Uh, still have two, four, six eggs to go. And I hope you guys aren't getting bored of egg cutting yet because we have a lot, 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 lot more to go here. Although I guess we're about 55, 60% of the way there. So we still have uh, a lot more eggs to cut. But this is another pinstripe. No azanthics yet, guys. So uh, let's hope we hit something here in the next five eggs. 
Here we go. All right, nope, no azanthic, just a normal ball python double head for lavender snow. So, so far we've been whipping pretty hard, guys, but that's okay, we're still getting some beautiful babies. And again, I might raise a few of these up if they're females to prove them out because you can always, you can never have enough females that can potentially produce really cool stuff. So, let's see what this next egg is. And like I always mention, you know, you're not gonna hit every single clutch as a banger, you know what I mean? You're gonna have some clutches where you're like, ah, oh, that's too bad. And the fact that this is a head to head gives my odds a little bit long. But to be honest with you, about one in four should be axanthic. A one in six should be pin axanthic. With nine eggs, I would have thought my odds were good enough to hit at least one pin axanthic. But so far, we, even, we haven't even hit one axanthic. So, three eggs to go. All right, here we go, guys. Let's see, boop, 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 boop. another normal. It starts to make you wonder, you know, is there a chance that something went awry? I have no idea, two eggs. We had one axanthic, then it was just bad odds. If we had no axanthic, then it makes me wonder. I know the male is already producing axanthic, so he's definitely proven. The female was supposed to be a head BPI axanthic, but you know, there's always a chance that something was wrong there too. So let's hope we hit in the next two eggs. Another normal pinstripe. So we're down to one egg, guys. So again, what will happen is if we don't hit an axanthic here, I'll probably change that female from a pinstripe het VPI axanthic to a female possible het because that tells me that there's a chance she may actually not be het. Don't get me wrong, with nine eggs, we could have just missed the odds, but we do still have one egg to go, so you never know what's gonna happen. Let's see what's in there. And here we go. Will there be an axanthic or not? Boop, boop, boop. Nope, there is not. It looks like definitely just a pinstripe that is possible head exanthic. So again, now what it is is the fact that, you know, sometimes you might have bought an animal that's had that isn't a head, or even produced an animal that may have retained sperm from the year before. She may not be a head. This was her first clutch, so I've never proved her out yet. So now I'll move her to a probable head instead of an absolute head, and we'll try maybe one more year, and if it doesn't produce an exanthic next year, then we'll just stop breeding her to exanthic and start over and use her for a different project. But nevertheless, we still got a bunch of really cool babies, and that's how breeding snakes go. So how about that? A little tiny pretty eater. For those of you guys that didn't know, palmetto corns are really pretty amazing animals. They stay small, but they almost look like a cow reticulated python. I absolutely love these guys and can't wait to grow a bigger group of them. If you guys enjoyed this, here's a playlist of me unboxing a ton of stuff right up here. Can you do me a favor? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on for everything. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.